Justin Fields was selected 11th overall in the 2021 NFL Draft. Five quarterbacks went in the first round of this draft. Quarterbacks such as Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and Mac Jones. It's arguable that all of these quarterbacks have underperformed in the NFL, aside from Trevor Lawrence. And it's arguable that on that list of underperformers is Justin Fields. But is it his fault? This is the story of Justin Fields. Justin Fields was born on March 5th, 1999, in Kennesaw, Georgia. I describe Kennesaw as a, you know, kind of a small town, uh, you know, in the suburb of Atlanta. He and his two sisters, Jaden and Jessica, were very athletic at a young age and pushed competition on each other in all sports. You already know as a big brother, I have to let her win. Just to keep her confidence up. So, you should have heard him before. You know. He's talking all kinds of stuff. Fields attended. Harrison High School in Kennesaw, Georgia. I'm Justin Fields. I go to Harrison High School in Kennesaw, Georgia. And excelled both in football and baseball. In two years as a starting quarterback for Harrison, he totaled 4,187 passing yards, 41 passing touchdowns, 2,096 rushing yards, and 28 rushing touchdowns. In the summer before his senior year in 2017, he attended the Elite 11 quarterback competition. Elite 11 is the most prestigious uh, high school quarterback camp in all of the country. We get together between 20 and 24 of the best high school quarterbacks in the country, and we drill that down to 11. And was named MVP of the event. After his senior season, he was named Mr. Georgia Football by the Touchdown Club of Atlanta, as well as First Team All-State. This got the attention of many universities, and he ended up going to Georgia as a true freshman in 2018. During the 2018 season, as backup to Jake Fromm, Fields did see action in 12 games, totaling 328 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, 266 rushing yards, and four rushing touchdowns. Following Georgia's loss to Alabama in the 2018 SEC Championship game, Fields announced his intent to transfer to THE Ohio State University. season at Ohio State proved to be a huge success. In the 2019 season, he helped lead the team to a Big Ten championship with a 34-21 victory over Wisconsin and a spot in the college football playoff. He was named the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year and First Team All-Conference. In the first round of the 2019 playoffs, the Buckeyes suffered a defeat against Clemson.
Jones had 320 passing yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions in the 29-23 loss. He finished the season with 373 passing yards, 41 passing touchdowns, and three interceptions to go along with 484 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. In his 2020 season with Ohio State, Fields helped lead the Buckeyes to another undefeated regular season and a Big Ten championship with a 22-10 victory over Northwestern. Ohio State received another bid to the college football playoff, playing a rematch against Clemson. Revenge time. Ohio State was victorious in their rematch against Clemson with a score of 49-28. to Fields threw for 385 passing yards and six touchdowns in that game. And that was after he took a hard shot to the midsection. He played through the injury in a performance that Sports Illustrated called legendary. The Buckeyes advanced to the college football playoff national championship. Two tight ends and running behind a linebacker, Joshua McMullen, Najee Harris. Teague runs left and scores, and Ohio State does answer quickly. What a drive. Devontae headed for the end zone, and Alabama back on top. Well, faces of pressure there, lost the football, and Ohio State takes it away. Teague barrels in, touchdown Ohio State. In second and three, Jones is pressured, lofts it to Harris who collects it, gets around Borland, and leaps to the end zone. Fields escapes, and looks pretty good as a runner there. Open field, and will finally step out of bounds. And go Jones on the run, and it's just two. Play action. Jones steps up right down the middle of the field. It's touchdown. Devontae Smith cannot be stopped. From the pocket, lofted to the end zone. High throw. Touchdown, Ohio State. That's Bolden who came in motion, got it in the flat, and got a touchdown. And behind number 40's block, Najee makes it look easy. Bama bludgeons the Buckeyes. Where they lost to Alabama 52-24. to Fields finished the shortened 2020 season, remember COVID, with 2,100 passing yards, 22 passing touchdowns, six interceptions, and added 383 rushing yards and five rushing touchdowns on the ground. He repeated as a Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year and unanimous first-team All-Conference. On January 18, 2021, Fields announced that he would be foregoing his final two years of eligibility to enter the 2021 NFL Draft. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Maybe wait. That's it. Now to say Justin Fields' time with the Chicago Bears has been a struggle or even a complete disaster would be an understatement. In his 2021 season with the Bears, he was named the starter after Andy Dalton suffered an injury in week three. In week four, Fields had his first start. After that, Fields was listed as a permanent starter. He finished the season throwing for 1,870 yards, seven touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. He rushed for two more touchdowns. The real tragedy comes from him being sacked 36 times, and he had 12 total fumbles in which five were lost. And if you thought things would get better for Fields in the 2022 season, I've got some news for you. He tied the league in sacks with Russell Wilson with 55, the highest in the entire league. And the Bears finished the 2022 season with three wins and 14 losses the worst record in the NFL that season. 
He threw for 2,242 yards with 17 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Now, despite all that, Fields was able to showcase his legs. Fields finished his second season with 1,143 rushing yards, making him the third NFL quarterback behind Vic and Lamar Jackson to get 1,000 plus yards in a season. However, he did also lead the league with 16 fumbles and those 55 sacks. He rushed for eight touchdowns. His speed was simply incredible and very entertaining to watch. With the 2023 season underway, it doesn't seem to be getting any better for Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. Some can argue it's getting worse, but whose fault is it? Now I'm gonna give my opinion here and I really hope it ages well. And if it doesn't, then you guys can crucify me. Now at some point, I'm sure we've all thought that Justin Fields was a one-man army, a one-man offense. We saw him running for his life. We saw him getting sacked and turning broken plays into huge gains or even scores. We saw glimpses of a great and dynamic quarterback. He definitely has talent. So what's the issue with the Chicago Bears and Justin Fields? Fields has had two head coaches and two offensive coordinators in his first three years in the NFL, each attempting to rebuild the team and rebuild Justin Fields into a more productive quarterback with very different methods, might I add. The Bears brought in Luke Getze in January of 2022, and the focus during the offseason was to mold Justin Fields into a dangerous passer. Getze had proven he can create that dangerous passing attack with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. The rub is, Justin Fields is not Aaron Rodgers. They are different quarterbacks with very different skill sets. Now, I understand a quarterback's main job is to throw the ball, obviously. But why take away the run from that? If you look at the records that Justin Fields broke with his rushing in 2021, why wouldn't you utilize that? Records such as most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game, most rushing yards over a five game span, most consecutive games with a rushing touchdown, the list goes on. I mean, use that, right? However, what we've seen in 2023 so far, he seems to have regressed. He seems robotic and reactive, and he seems frustrated with the coaching as well. Um, you know, could be uh, coaching, I think. Although I think that comment was blown out of proportion a little bit. It just seems like he's having a really hard time reading defenses, and his confidence doesn't seem to be where it was when he was at Ohio State. A good example of a quarterback that's similar to Justin Fields is Jalen Hurts. The Eagles have molded their offense around Jalen Hurts' strengths. They allow Hurts to run. They built it into their game plan, but with a lot of QB options and then worked in play actions, RPOs, and long shots down the field. And now their offense is regarded as one of the most dangerous in the league. I mean, they made the Super Bowl last year. Now I'm gonna say up front that I could just be completely wrong in my assessment here, but I honestly think that Justin Fields is a fine quarterback. With that being said, I think he might not be the quarterback who can go into a complete disaster like the Chicago Bears and turn the program completely around. Someone like uh, Joe Burrow who went to Cincinnati under similar circumstances and took his team to the Super Bowl. And by the way, Burrow was the most sacked quarterback in 2021, and that was the year they went to the Super Bowl. However, I do believe that Justin Fields has a lot of talent. I can't help but to believe that. And maybe under a more stable structure, a team with good coaches, good weapons, good protection, I think he would perform perfectly fine. It's so important to develop a young quarterback in his first few years in the NFL and I truly believe that the Chicago Bears failed him in that regard. They were trying to turn him into something that he's not. They refused to utilize his natural talents. They failed to protect him or put good weapons around him, and they failed to coach him properly. Now, I'm not a film analyst, but I've watched a lot of videos of people who are, who can really read the X's and O's, and they're very quick to point out that Justin Fields just doesn't know what he's doing out there. He can't read defenses. He's missing wide open receivers. And they all question, what are they coaching him to do? 
But of course, you can't put it all on coaching. And maybe it is a little bit of both. Maybe he's just not that great of a quarterback. But I do believe that if he went to a more stable team, I don't think it would be a complete disaster as it is right now. With all that being said, one thing is for sure. Justin Fields has been competing his entire life. I think it's finding your identity in Christ and not letting, you know, uh, not having to be validated by what anybody else has to say. You know, if you're, you know, grounded in Christ, um, I feel like there's nothing that can come your way that can, you know, mess you, you up. Lose. Of course, yeah, you, you can't lose. He puts his faith in God, and he's always willing to fight through adversity. Yeah, like, my first reaction to, you know, reacting to adversity is just, you know, keep going. Right. You know, don't stop, you know. You have to be alert to the beauty in life the unexpected beauty in life. You know, you have to look for those little bit of, that little bit of sparkling crystal in the darkness when things are bad. You have to look and see where things are still beautiful and where there's still something that's sustaining. And, you know, you narrow your time frame and you be grateful for what you have and that can get you through some very dark times. And maybe even successfully if you're lucky, but even if unsuccessfully, then maybe it's only tragic and not absolute hell. Me, I personally yes, believe you go through everything for a reason, bro. Yeah, so like yeah. all the adversity I've hit through my life, like it's made me into the person I am today. Like I feel like if I didn't go through some things earlier, then I wouldn't be able to handle stuff now. Right, so 100%. I feel like everything works hand in hand. It's funny. I have a few cousins who are Chicago Bears fans and they want him traded because they think he's a bust. I want him traded too, but for different reasons. I really want to see him shine. And if he's going to shine, I don't really want it to be against the Detroit Lions. But I'm being honest here, I, I am rooting for Justin Fields. I really hope he has success. Not against the Lions though, of course. Thanks for watching. Please do me a huge favor and leave a comment. What do you think of Justin Fields? Do you think he's a boss? Do you think it's the, the team that failed him? Or maybe it's a, a combination of both. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to do more mini documentaries. I know this is a little bit different than my normal videos because it's not Detroit Lions related. However, I really enjoy doing these little mini documentaries and I'm planning on doing them for players around the league. So if you have a player who you think has a good story, please let me know and I'll, I'll look into it. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Cheers.